Now then, before editing this video, after recording the red boss, I was like, why not try to beat the blue boss? And I was actually able to defeat it. So this video will contain both the red and blue boss. Please refer to the timestamps to see where to go for certain parts of the video. At the end, I'm just going to talk about my, my thoughts on the guild boss releasing so early into the game's life cycle, but that's at the end. So it's going to start off with the red boss and at a certain point, I'm going to input the blue boss. So yeah, let's hop into the video and I'll show you guys how to beat both the red and blue guild boss. All right, so I really was trying to beat all three of these dungeons, but it's just a bit too hard to beat the other one. So I'm going to do this one at a time when I clear the other ones or when I'm able to on like someone else's account. I'll show it on Nightmare difficulty, but for Nightmare, I'm just saying I'd say the best one is definitely the red guild boss because of the fact that the other two are just kind of really hard. Uh, I think you could maybe do it for blue if you get very lucky, but overall, for your average person, I'd say that you should be doing the red, yeah, this is red, the red Hecaries of Rousing Fire, okay? So how he works is essentially, um, you can't stun him, right? And you also can't buff yourself, so it's only, you're only able to really debuff the enemy. Now, the main part about him that's very annoying is that he is, has a chance every time he gets, he takes damage, to give himself a mobility buff of 40%, which basically is like gonna completely mess up the turn order. So this is his main thing, main gimmick that you kind of want to get rid of. So I'll explain to you the team that you could use that I would say is relatively free to play, which you should have three out of four of these units uh, being either Lotus or Mars. And if you're smart, both of them, because of the fact we, we just had the 999 banner. So you should have gotten both of these by now, one from the uh, first reroll banner and one from the 999. And then Nebra is a given. She's an SR and she is the main part of this video. If you don't have Nebra, you would be using Lotus. It's the only replacement for Nebra in this team. And then you've got Julius, who you also would kind of need Maybe doable with Kyoto, but Julius just makes this a lot better. He is just insane for PvE content, right? So let's explain how exactly this team works. Let me put on their gear sets first because I don't think they're on. So the main part of this team is Nebra. Now, like I said, the main thing that was annoying is the fact that, um, what's it called? That he buffs himself, or he has a chance to buff himself every time he gets hit. I give himself the mobility buff, which this gives buff immunity for one turn, which is enough to start debuffing him like crazy, which is the main part. And to get that, you do need the skill page. So you need Nebra with her skill page. And if you don't, then it would be very tricky to do this run. So even like SSR, whatever, as long as she's able to tank one hit, then she's done her job. And you do need her skill page. So I really hope you've never sold, never a skill page, because it is cracked, right? Now, Mars, um, I, I didn't really put anything that really mattered here, but technically you should be putting his skill page. If not, the defense one works, or like HP, whatever that gives him defense or HP works on him. And then I have a full defense build for Mars. Now, Julius, I've got a skill page, which I recommend a lot of you have. If you don't have it, I don't think it's the end of the world, but it does make the run a lot better. So this is his talents, right? The other ones, if you wanted to see them. I don't think Never has any. And then Lotus, I give him his skill page, get the extra speed. Then it's like just a magic attack set with barely any defense increase. So it's really not that crazy, right? So that's basically how this team is looking. It's not like the craziest team, you know, um, what's it called? uh mars has like a pretty good set but that's pretty much it so we're, we'll go into it i'll show you guys how it's done but i just want to say if you guys can't beat it on nightmare it's fine i mean you could do it on hard this game mode came probably a bit too early because on jp what this came out in season five and we're only on season two so you know it makes sense that you guys can't beat it if your if units aren't strong enough or you don't have nebra i would say this becomes kind of impossible but what you can do if you don't have nebra is really it's Come just solid me, okay shit. It really is just solid. The reason being, he gets the chance for buff immunity. Chance from his combo, which is the only other, like, pretty much unit you could use for this type of team comp. And it's only a chance, so it kind of uh, is a lot harder to actually use, which is why you should be using Nebra. So where is Nebra? I think I lost her. I lost Nebra, guys. She's a UR, so she's right there. All right, let's go in, and uh, I'll show you guys how to do it. Once you just get into the groove of it, it becomes quite simple. I have a cold, so anytime you see me like pause or cut, it's because I'm blowing my nose. So turn one, uh, I'm just going to apply the de uh, the buff immunity, and then you also get the defense reduction, which is good. Remember, he can be debuffed, which is great, but you cannot extend that debuff, okay? So we're going to use the, um, the ultimate, okay? And get the incapacity with the speed lower. Now, if you have the skill page, you're going to start off with the skill two, and if you don't have it, you're going to start off with the alt. 
but doesn't really matter but for sure definitely better if you have it uh now from this point you're just gonna try and get the taunt and at that point it's wraps right so we're gonna use we don't really need to use much we'll just use this lower his attack make him do less damage then extend debuffs now the buff block or buff yeah buff block it cannot be extended so it's gonna stay at one turn but just looking at how it's going it's He's not really going to get much of a chance to end up using it either way. So from this point, we're just going to apply this um, to try and get maybe more of a speed reduction. But I don't know if we even can. But we get all attack lower, so now we're looking like quite good. Now at this point, I'm just going to use the combo because your ult really does not matter. And this way, Julius does damage and also lowers the boss's stamina a bit. But not much. If we could get the stamina lower here, that would be there we go. And we don't have access to the other stamina lower. But it's fine. So he still hasn't attacked yet. We'll just get the retaunt. Oh, well, buffing. Okay, well, it doesn't really matter. And it's fine because Julius. Bop, bop, bop. And now uh, we reapply the buff immunity. And he still can't get the stamina increase. And at this point, it's wrapped. So we just extend. Okay, and now we lower the stamina with Julius. Or mobility, as you global players like to call it. And from this point, like, what is he going to do? So, yeah, it becomes quite simple, right? Quite, quite simple. Um, now it's just about killing him. Which now, like, it, I love seeing this type of things with uh, Lotus where it's like three turns, three turns, three turns, three turns, right? I find that just kind of fun. Uh, especially, like, in Hall of Illusions, in the 85 or 95, I forgot which, you're going to be able to see that he's going to be able to get a lot of, uh, like, it's going to be eight, nine turn debuffs, which is very funny. I, I don't know the exact one. It's the one versus Keanu, but yeah. I think Julius kills here. Or Lotus. Julius. Okay. All right, and there we go. So this one's quite simple. Uh, I still don't know where the like squad shop is for uh, the guild boss, because if we go to the shop right now, I'm most certain that it's not there still. So I think there's a glitch going on with that not really too sure what's going on all right so we're going to be showing also now the blue boss so this one is going to be quite a demanding team i guess overall and it's going to require a good amount of things so i cannot go into it because i already beat it so i'm going to show you guys the vod of me actually beating it now i'll show you guys the team right now then go into their gear and everything this is the team you're going to be using, and I would not say another team at the moment could beat this. You do need Raya, and then you would need pretty much Ghosh, or if you got lucky and you summoned, at the moment Gifso did come out, Gifso would work, okay? Gifso would work if you built him up, but that's basically the two options that you could use for this, I would say. Um, because you really do need a lot of these buffs, but basically anything to give you the most amount of buffs, if you can mix and manage all of that, then it does work. Now, one thing you got to remember about buffs and how they work is that you cannot stack two of the same buffs. So you do not want to basically be giving two of the same buffs in this thing. So technically I could not use Valtos and uh, Sally because Sally gives the magic attack buff and Valtos also gives a magic attack buff. So you want to get as many different buffs because Raya gets 15% increased damage per buff on him, which is how this team works. And Radis is there to sustain because in this team, Ghost gives damage increase, more damage increase, all attack, okay? Sally gives magic attack increase, crit rate increase and then also all attack but that's more so for Radis to make his barrier stronger and she's going to be giving lifesteal with the skill page to help Raya out so I would recommend that for this month's skill page to get Sally's because it is actually quite crazy giving the all attack buff plus also the lifesteal when uh, Raya is below 30% which is going to happen and you're going to see in the run so Sally is on a full defense build because she is red I decided to give her the help for defense now Raya I gave him this skill page because it does more damage against bosses but the all attack works the damage increase works and then from these I would say Julius's works and maybe um Asta's but none of the other ones really and Gork's also on the bottom this guy W guy now you're going to be building it with magic attack because the buffs you're receiving are going to be mainly magic and it's going to work very easily so I would recommend building him with magic just because of the fact that Sally uh is just a better buffer for magic units so that's technically how you're going to run this team because if you run Finroll or William instead of Sally it doesn't work as well and William also messes up the turn order so there is that to keep in mind these are his talents so you guys know um then after that Rodas magic attack build for a big 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 barrier and that's essentially it and then finally ghost where's ghost i gotta find my boy now ghost obviously could be gifso like i said but this team is 
quite fixed, but if you find any other buffers that you want to kind of make it work together, sure, go ahead. But there's only two uh, all attack buffers in the game at the moment being Ghost and sorry, three Ghost, Sally, and then also Gift Zone. Now, the thing is with Ghost is that why you use them is because of the other buffs he gives, being penetration and intense sunlight. And then also the weapon enhancement when he uh, is giving that to someone above 80% HP, which he is able to do. So all those things kind of work together and they end up playing into this team to help Rai get the most amount of buffs. And Radis also gives two buffs, especially if you have his skill page, being the defense and damage res buff. And remember, Raya gets 15% per buff on him, which is the whole way that this team works. Okay, so let me pull up the VOD and show you guys how it's done. So, obviously, we're in media player. I'll turn off the audio since you already have the music in the back. Now, at first, um, I do want to say, if you have Rodis at two dupes and you could get the taunt, because when Rodis gets taunted, if he has the dupe pass, when Rodis gets hit, if he has a dupe passive, he has a chance to taunt, which was our lucky proc right here. Is it needed? Not 100%, but it does help majorly. And it's not exactly hard to get the dupes, right? You just go in the overworld and you get your world level to four and then you're going to be able to get these. So, over time, you will be able to do this, of course, so there is that. Um, so you're going to start off with giving the all attack buff. And I got very lucky getting both intense sunlight buffs because my ghost is at two dupes. Now from this point, you give the magic attack buff because obviously Raya is built with magic. And then you give you put the skill two. Now because of the fact that Raya was below the HP threshold, Sally's skill page allowed him to get the lifesteal, which is what saves him in this run. And then from here, we get the defense increase, which is another two um, buffs for Raya to just go crazy with. And from this point, we are fine. We get very lucky, obviously, because of that taunt. And now, okay, because of the fact that you could see here my rise hp is at 100 percent okay the weapon enhancement is to people who are above 80 percent for one turn which means that when i use this he's going to give raya the weapon enhancement 30 percent increased damage which is a buff and also just 30 percent more damage and at this point it's gg now to make sure that we survive and all is good because obviously your raya might not do as much as mine you're going to use the all attack buff with sally so that Rodis's barrier is going to be bigger okay so that's how it's going to work then you just alt and as you can see, we pretty much do kill him here, but we have to kind of get rid of the last chip amount of HP, and that's basically wraps. I've been having to blow my nose a lot today. Oh my. Okay, so he does kind of like pierce through a lot of the barriers, but we're looking fine. I could have comboed there, and Raya would have killed. Doesn't really change much because we kill right here. And that's the end of this guild boss run, okay? So remember, Raya can't really be replaced at the moment because of what he could do in nuking damage. You would need an all attack buffers that isn't really Sally or just a buffer that isn't Sally that gives different types of buffs. Ghost being the best one, then being Gift So, okay? They both work very well. So either or works, be but the thing is people don't really have Gift So yet because he did just come out on the Kyoto Kohono banner unfeatured, right? Now, Sally is um, going to be the best because obviously magic attack, create, all attack, and she gives the life steal to allow the weapon enhancement to work if you have the skill page, and then Rodis just works extremely well. So this is probably the best team, uh, but you could replace, uh, if you if you don't have Sally, the way this could work is you put uh, Gift So and then you put Voltos. Would it work as well? No, but it could work because Gift So is going to give the all attack buffs, and then Voltos is going to give the magic attack buffs, which work out roughly the same, but not as well at all. So that's essentially it for the blue boss. I hope this was helpful, and yeah. I think this is the one that most people should target first because it's the easiest, and you can get your mini rewards right here, and it's going to definitely be the quickest, but of course, a full guild is not able able to target just one boss if everyone is attacking so that is the worrying part i think with this uh, type of uh, boss because of the fact that um you need to beat the other ones and the other ones are not that easy especially i would say the green boss is quite rough because of the fact we're missing out on a lot of units that we're able to make the green boss so easy on jp and another reason uh is that you might need to be building the summer asta but actually getting him would be taking away resources for other stuff right so i think that there's a lot of uh if this came out in season three it would have been a lot better it would have been a lot better but the fact that it hasn't is a bit worrying but as long i the thing is with this it doesn't matter because it's going to come back every single season or it should it's it's came back every single season on jp and this is just something they like release two weeks bop 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 and then like that's technically it so i'd say that it's fine that they release it it's just it shows how much of a problem we have with uh like our units because let's say for example like i want to use raya for the blue boss right then I can't really do so, right? Um, because of the fact 
that I mean, I need to upgrade his ultimate, but guess what? If I go to it, it's level three and I just don't have the resources because they're not giving enough. And what's kind of ironic is that what I'm supposed to get the skill upgrade materials from is the guild boss and I can't, I need to beat it first, right? So like, let's say I'm tasked with fighting the uh, blue boss then I'm going to need Raya as alt as high as I can, right? But obviously I won't be able to because I don't have the resources because of just like the lack of resources. But we're slowly, get, slowly getting there. Um, I think now that people aren't summoning as much and now that like someone like Kyoto and Kono just aren't exactly a crazy unit, it's fine. But yeah, I just wanted to ramble on, kind of give a show, talk about a bit of the flaws that are apparent with the guild boss because it's come so early, three seasons early. Kind of insane, right? Kind of insane. But yes, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope this helped you. I will try my best to fight the green and red boss. Uh, no, the green and blue boss as soon as possible. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.